UCLA at number one Oregon Thursday night football ESPN. Marco, what should batters be looking at? Well, we've got a Thursday night game with the number one team in the country. The number one team's lost the last two weeks. Not going to happen this week. You got a 24 point favorite with Oregon. They had last week off to prepare for this game. They moved to number one without playing a game and seeing what happened the last two weeks. You can rest assured a Thursday night ESPN game, they'll be focused. But I really can't recommend a play in this game because the value's gone. This game opened at 21 and is already up to 24. But I don't want any parts of UCLA. Okay, so what I'm hearing is we've got a number one team that had to buy national TV. We expect the focus, but the line move, if there, w if there was any value at 21, it's gone at 24. Absolutely. All right, now a couple points here. You've got a proud program, a UCLA, a, a, a program with a lot of tradition. And to me, I always like taking programs with a lot of tradition that are big underdogs. Now, actually, UCLA is an historic underdog. Uh, as a 24-point dog, they've only been this big of a dog once since 1985. So in 25 years, they've only been a 24-point dog or more once. So, I, I mean, this is a, a generational-type underdog. Now, they're 8-2 and two as double-digit dogs. Uh, and, and again, that's not over 25 years, that's in more recent time, which I think is a good example of when you have a proud program who is put into a big underdog role. Now, as a capper, do you like those spots typically? It, the situations, Barrett, this, this is not one of them for me because it's... Wait, I'm sorry, the situations, well, Barrett, I don't know what last week, for example, I mean, that's exactly what I did. I had my best bet was Texas against Nebraska. Right, so that's my quite In general, you agree with that handicapping concept? I do. And why not in this case? In this instance, because first of all, I feel Oregon is the toughest home field in all of college football. You know, there's maybe three or four, but to me, going there, this crowd is so loud. You take it now, a number one ranking. This team's never been ranked number one in college football. You put it on a national spotlight on a Thursday night game. We know how much, you know, you handicap Thursday night games differently because of the crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's and just the travel. The travel. Both teams had last week off, so it's not a factor for either. This is just a, a situation that I can't recommend UCLA. Well, I understand that. So uh, I, I, what I'm hearing you say is, is I'm hearing you say that Oregon fits into a lot of the scenarios that the public likes to bet up. You've got a team that's now become marquee. You've got a team that's a big favor. You've got a team that has a raucous home crowd. And what you're saying is typically you might want to fade those things because they overestimate those factors. But you think legitimately those factors that the public easily recognizes are actually valid in this case, making the number about right. I do. And when you look at Oregon, this is just one of the highest scoring offenses in college football. They can take any play all the way to the house. And we saw what they did against Stanford. Remember, they were down 21-3 at home and just totally turned yeah. that game around. All right. And a few numbers backing up Oregon at home because uh, to some degree, once a home team becomes dominant, the line usually adjusts for that. They've actually covered 8 of 10 at home. So the lines maker hasn't caught up to their extreme home field, it would seem. And they're 8-2 and two off a bye. Uh, and again, all of that I, all that hasn't been with the Oregon coach, uh, I don't think, but but a chunk of it has. All right, last question: Home team in this series is five of eighteen ATS, so five and thirteen ATS. Any reason you see for that? Because sometimes, and, and maybe this is what we can ask the viewers out there to consider, is there something about this matchup, this West Coast rivalry, that the, that the home field typically doesn't mean as much? Does anything jump out at you? See, when you, to me as a handicapper, when you throw out a, a broad statement like that, 5 of 18, the home team in this series, I like to go back as a handicapper, and I don't have that data in front of me, and look at how many of the home teams were the favorite or the dog because to me it's the complexion of the game when I look at it. If the home team's always the favorite, which is what you would assume. But over, over two decades, if a home team almost two decades is only covering five times, 
it could now again five and thirteen is not statistically significant if it was a coin flip. But if there's a rationale, to me, that's the thing about trends. Sometimes trends get so extreme, you don't need a rationale. But most of the time, the trend is the starting point, and understanding the rationale is next. And I don't see the rationale here. Like We've talked a couple times in the last few weeks about home and away matchups where they were only 100 miles apart, right. and that the, the visitors did particularly well ATS because the lines maker didn't take into account that there'd be a lot of traveling. Clearly, that's not the geographic case here. Right. Can we identify any reason? Nothing jumps out at me, and it might be something that in the forums uh, at pregame.com or in the YouTube comment section, someone local might be uh, local to these teams might explain it to us. Absolutely. Uh, throw one more thing on uh, stat of Oregon, and this is a significant stat with them this year. In six games so far, they have 22 takeaways which is an, you know, an enormous number. And what ends up happening, because of that offense, as high scoring as it is, when they get those big leads on teams, teams are forced then to go one-dimensional, throw in on most downs, and that sets up for turnovers in the second half, which is important when you're looking at teams that look to extend whenever you've got big point spreads. See, now that's the you, – you extended – the whole idea of rationale behind the number because typically I like and most handicappers like to go against a team that has a real plus margin and turnovers because they think it's going to even out in the end and that they've been overperforming because of that but you're saying the reason for this is Oregon's getting into a big lead become one dimensional and that's causing a lot of turnovers. When the defense can pin their ears back and come at the quarterback bad things are going to happen for the opposing offenses. All right. so what's your official uh, I have, projection? I have Oregon winning 45 to 20, 25 point spread, but the line is 24, so no, not a most, lot of Most of the time the number's right, so you can't force a pit. All right, now it's your turn to continue the conversation in the comments section with Marco and me. And next up we're going to be talking about the Friday night game, South Florida at Cincinnati.